Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I wanted to talk to you briefly today about us continuing to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints and how so many Christians, I can't look at today, Art, I said before, I don't know. I don't have a saved meter I can't tell you if they're saved or not. But they deny the clear gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and maybe they got tricked into it, I pray, after they got saved, and they're in doctrinal error. That can happen. It can. Christians can be in grave area for, error excuse me, for a long period of time. If they're not listening to the Holy Spirit and not being led by the Spirit, and they've been convinced that their religious mindset is correct. But I'll tell you the one thing they won't have, if they be honest, and most of them won't, is they don't have any peace in their spirit about their salvation. And they run around continuing trying to work for it like a hamster on a habit trail, running, 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 uh, trying to keep themselves saved. And also as I used as the thumbnail for this video, walking a tightrope for their salvation. And that's, just, that's just an absolute blasphemous lie. You either saved or you not. It's like somebody saying, a woman saying, I'm a little bit pregnant. No, honey. You'll never hear a woman say that, ever. Ever. You either are or you're not. You can say, I think I might be, and then you have to go get confirmation what as to whether you are or you're not, but you either is or you ain't. And if you are, you are, and if you're not, you're not. So the title of this video is The True Definition of Grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. To hell deserving sinners. Now, before I finish this, I want to interject because most Christians will say amen to that. Oh, amen, sister, amen. Amen. Wait till I drop the bomb on you. This is where, I guess if I had to hazard a guess, at least 50% of them will go, go uh, uh, I don't believe that. Why not? It's the true gospel. Grace is God's unmerited favor to hell the serving sinners without any expectation of return on the part of the sinner. Now, that's where you lose them. That's where they'll be coughing up, choking. No, I, 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 can't, I can't go with you there. No, that's not right. Oh, yes, it is. If you study these scriptures out, oh, yes, it is. And I'm talking about new covenant. Don't point me to no old covenant. Because the old covenant is a type and shadow where we can see Christ. It was to lead us unto Christ. And Jeremiah told us that there was a new covenant coming in chapter 31, verse 31 through 34, where the Lord was going to write the law upon our hearts. And this is exactly what Paul reiterates in Hebrews. And that we were going to be his people and he remember our sins no more. And yet they keep wanting to make it about sin. I am so tired of that. I can't tell you, man, that is frustrating to me. It is so frustrating and egregious to me. That they want to make it about sin. We're talking about salvation. We're not talking about our walk with Christ after salvation. The things that we should do. We're talking about to be saved. It is all of Christ. It is all of our faith in Him. And as I was trying to explain to somebody tonight, because I caught them butchering some scriptures and saying, oh, you have to do good works to be saved. That is a lie. Paul clearly declared, he said, if it is grace, 
then it's no more works. And if it's works, then it's no more grace. And yet we know in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. The faith isn't even of yourself. Do you know the Bible says God has dealt to every man the measure of faith? I've said it before. That measure of faith is the faith that is necessary for salvation. Every man has it. He stacked the deck in man's favor because it is the Father's will that none should perish. So everyone has the faith that is needed for salvation. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You will show them that scripture. Then you can show them where Paul said, it's not of works, it is grace, or the, or the works are canceled out. It's canceled out. The works are canceled out by the grace of the Lord. God's unmerited favor. They do not understand the definition of grace. And this is how they keep ending up in erroneous places, in, in doctrinal error, in listening to these lordship damnation heretics. Beloved, for those of you who have, a, who have received the truth and you're trying to come out of that evil mindset that you have to do some form of works to be saved, to get saved, or to stay saved, any of that, then meditate on that definition. God's unmerited favor to hell-deserving sinners without any expectation of return on the part of the sinner. And I want to always give credit where credit is due. I heard that from the late Dr. Curtis Hudson. Now, whatever you think of him, because I'm sure somebody got an issue with him somewhere, that is absolutely 100% correct. That definition is correct. You study Hebrews. I don't even know how anybody could read Hebrews and end up in doctrinal error on what grace is and what the Lord has done for us. It's so sad. It's, it's tragic. Because, listen, they don't have any peace. But here's what really irritates the snizzle out of me. They going to come mess with us when we have peace. The Bible says we have peace with God. Because we have believed on his son and we have been redeemed. We have peace with God. But what do they want to come bring? Everything but peace. They want to bring contention and strife and literally blaspheme the very gospel itself. Well, I kind of understand because they don't have any peace. So what are they going to bring? They can't bring peace. They don't have any. They don't have the peace of the Lord and the peace that the Lord gives because they have not received his gospel. And so I, I'm just, I'm to the point where I'm going to always proclaim the, the true gospel, but I am done trying to convince anyone. I'm at the shake the dust off your feet. Proclaim the gospel and then keep it moving. Those that have an ear to hear will hear. Those that have eyes to see will see. Those that are truly seeking Christ will receive and will receive it with gladness. And the rest of you, I'll pray for you. And that's all I can do. Because trying to fight with you to convince you. I remember there was an account the late Dr. J. Vernon McGee gave about a man that was drowning and a lifeguard ran out to save him. And all the people gathered around the shore that saw this going on were watching. And as the man swims out to the man, he's telling him, hey, just calm down, you know. 
I, I, I'm, I'm here to help you. But the man just keeps flailing his arms and swinging, and he starts swinging at the, <laughs> the lifeguard, fighting him, kind of, you know, trying to, to swim. And the man, he's trying to tell the man, no, just relax. I will pull you back to safety. But the man keeps swinging and flailing his arms, trying to swim, and he's hitting the lifeguard. So finally the lifeguard just punches the dude. Boom. And he said you can hear it all the way back to the shore. And, and the people kind of gasped like, oh. And so when he drags the man back, he hit him so hard, he knocked him out, he drug him back. And the people said, well, we, can't, we understand, you know, he was fighting you, you had to, you know, he was trying to save him, but did you have to hit him so hard? And the lifeguard said, I can't save a man that's trying to save himself. Beloved, if, if you, if they trying to save themselves, they are fighting against Jesus, and they're fighting against the gospel. And I, I'm telling you the truth, I'm done fighting with them. I'm still going to proclaim the truth, but I'm done fighting with them. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen.